Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Tonight I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial on how to incorporate textures into your images. And i got to say this is something that I haven't really done in quite a while. Like I used to do it a lot when I first started out with photography and I was doing a lot of experimenting in Photoshop and that sort of thing. But um, I haven't actually done this in a little while and I don't know why because it's something that I always used to love doing and it can really just transform a photograph and really give you a totally different effect. Um, so yeah, it's, it's much easier than a lot of people probably think that it is to incorporate textures. So I'm just going to show you a really simple method of doing it and uh, a method that's also going to be able to give you quite a bit of variation as to what you can come up with. Uh, so just from using one texture. The first texture I am going to use is just from DeviantArt. You can get these textures all over the internet, pre-made ones. You can also make your own textures and I'm pretty sure I still remember how to make them in Photoshop but not only that you can actually take photos of textures as well so um, just like a whole photograph of, of any textured area or surface that always works. So yeah you can use your own photos, you can use um, pre-made textures on the web that have basically no copyright as well that's always helpful. Uh, but yeah this texture I'm just going to use on the other image that I had up. I'm going to just drag this into the image or you can copy and paste it uh, and I'm just going to click OK to this. That's a pop-up window that can sometimes come up when you've got other people's textures that you're using different um, color modes that sort of thing and obviously this texture is not quite covering the whole image so we're just going to hold down control and T and that will select that and we can just hold shift and drag the furthest corner to make it bigger and press enter okay so we've got our texture there and now all we're going to do is really work with blending modes so I do use blending modes a lot in my work um, but especially for textures they can really give your photos a totally different effect so the blending modes are just down here in the drop down menu and I like to stick to using like soft light overlay, uh, screen, multiply. I find those ones really work well, but I mean, it just depends on your image, depends on the texture that you have. A lot of these could work. So um, I'm just going to flick through a couple of them and just show you guys what they look like. So that's what soft light looks like. So that's kind of a cool effect. It's really good to use textures if you're doing like conceptual photography, because uh, they can totally give you like a darker, grungier effect or even like a brighter um, glowy effect but anyway this is what hard light looks like so it's a bit too strong um, multiply as I said before is usually a good one to use uh, so I actually like that for this image so I'm just going to leave it at multiply and you can change the opacity of the layer anytime you want I'm just going to leave it at 100 now though and I'm going to get the eraser over here and make sure the opacity is set to not a hundred but say maybe halfway so 50% or less um, just so you can kind of remove the texture from the parts of the image that you know you feel are too heavy obviously in this image I want Sahara's face to be shown so I'm just going to remove some of the texture over her face and a little bit over her clothing and we'll just go a bit over her face again and her leg I've got like massive lag with my mouse right now. Don't know what's happening. Okay, and just a little bit more over the clothing, over the legs, just so it doesn't look like she does have splatters all over her skin necessarily. And I'll just sort of extend that out a little bit. And just a few more. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, you can, like I said, you can use all these different types of um, blending modes as far as, you know, trying to get the one that you, you feel might suit the image the most. Um, but for this one, I think multiply works really well. It gives it that grungy look. I might just lower the opacity slightly on it, just to around maybe 90%. And I'm going to take a snapshot. So that was the before and that's the after. So obviously after that I would flatten the, the image or save it as a PSD first 
with the layers and then flatten the image and save it as a JPEG. Um, so yeah, that's one type of texture that you can use, like a grungy one uh, for your images, which I always used to love using, especially on conceptual images, as I said before. But I'm going to go back to the original image now and I'm going to show you guys what another texture might look like on it. So this other texture here I've also gotten from DeviantArt and we're going to drag this one into there. Okay, so this is also just a little bit short, so control T and we'll just drag that out a little bit and enter. So this one's obviously more of a bokeh, really bright, sparkly, glittery kind of texture. And you can actually take photos like this quite easily. If you've got glitter and you just set your lens to, you know, be out of focus slightly, you'll get this effect. So you can definitely photograph these kinds of textures yourself. And I've tried it before and you can come up with some really interesting looks. So it's always fun trying to do um, photographing textures and that sort of thing. But anyway, I'm going to go through some of the blending modes again. So soft light. Now that looks really dreamy, really, really different to what the original image looked like. So if I remove that, it looks totally different. Um, so I'll try hard light again. That's probably a bit too heavy. Cool if you want to do some digital art and that sort of thing though, I guess. Um, screen. It's very bright. Multiply. So they come with really interesting effects. Um, I think I like soft light for this one though, and I'm going to just lower the opacity slightly maybe to about 90 again and then I'm going to get the eraser and do the same thing that I did on the other image so I'm just going to remove the texture from parts of the image that I want to show through more so just over those kinds of areas and actually I might just see what that looks like at full opacity I think that's fine at full opacity actually. I might just leave it at 100. And I want to see what it looks like when I remove this one dot here. I don't know if it's annoying me yet. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't annoy me at first and then I'll look back at the image later and go, yeah, that's really annoying me having that there. Um, so if we just see what that looks like, probably prefer it without. So yeah, you can just erase parts of the image that you don't want. Um, you can change the brightness and contrast of the texture to, so I'm just going to go control M for this um, and bring up curves. So you can make it more contrasty, um, brighter, darker, colorful, not colorful. So you can pretty much do anything with the textures. Um, I'm definitely going to look at using textures more actually, because I'm having a bit of fun actually just experimenting with using a few of them at the moment. Um, so I'm going to just press OK and I'll show you guys what that's done. So that's just added a little bit more cloudiness to the image. So really good if you're looking at getting some different effects with your photos, I guess. And I'm just going to create a snapshot and I'm going back to the original image and that's what it looks like now. So both of these textures have created totally different looks. I mean, this is obviously looking a lot dreamier and the last one that we, we did was a lot more grungier and much sadder looking photo actually so yeah textures are awesome to use in photographs and I highly encourage people to use them um, I know there's the whole debate about you know whether it's considered photography still if you do use the textures but I think it's it's good to experiment and it's good to come up with things that are new so um, like I said, if you can photograph the textures yourself, the better, like, because then the entire image has been created by you and you don't need to worry about copyright. You don't need to worry about referencing someone else. Um, and yeah, it's just generally better that way. But, um, yeah, let me know what you guys think and if you guys use textures in your images often. And if you guys have any other requests as usual, please let me know because I'm always willing to do them when I have a bit of spare time. So yeah, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Bye.